What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So this is my buddy Dylan. Uh, he's been on a couple videos before. You've probably seen him recently. So what we're doing today is a uh, kind of talking about how we set up the shop. Um, I include Dylan in a lot of things here in the shop logistics wise because uh, I work with him on so many projects. If I need help, he's here. If he needs help, I'm here. So uh, we're, we're always uh, working in the shop together. So I don't have a much closer friend that I work with. So we've kind of set up the pegboard exactly how we wanted it uh, to make sure that we had all the right tools. So I guess this video is all about organization and how uh, we keep our tools close by that we use often. And, um, you know, just kind of a, a something to get your mind turning on what you should kind of set your shop up for if you would like, you know. Um, kind of more efficiency uh, and just overall trying to get that workflow better so that you work better. So I, I hate going somewhere and not being able to find a tool. Um, especially if I'm like, hey Dylan, grab the 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. And then he's over there fiddling in the toolbox full of wrenches. You know, you pull out the metric drawer and you're, I have like 500 wrenches yeah. and you're like looking for all these wrenches. Like, what do I do? So we've hung one on the board. So we've keep it close. The things that we use most often we're putting on the shelf. So let's go through it and talk about it. I digress. I've talked too much already. So, so all right. So let's start it off with this side. Um, why do we have the crescent wrenches up there? Or the, some people call them adjustables. Why do we have them up there? Doing brakes. I know a lot of it comes down doing brakes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I can think of a couple things I use the adjustable for. I use the adjustable for more... Um, I use it for more projects here on the bench than I do on the car. So I feel like that's just an overall useful tool for me, and that's why I put it up there. The little uh, drilling hammer... Um, that thing is sweet. That little, I think yeah, I, it's coming handy a lot. Breaking stuff loose if you can't get in with a bar, the extend on the ratchet or whatever, just beat it a couple of times and it breaks loose. Yeah, it's, and and that thing is only like fifteen bucks. Yeah, and then it, I mean, it's small. It's got a small handle, so it's not. It's a little bit smaller than a regular hammer, but it's got more weight to it. So when you hit it, it's in a. You don't have to get that much power behind it to break something loose. Yeah, and it's three pounds, so yeah. it's really stout. I probably scared Rambo just now. Um, I've made a little uh, a shelf for our little adapters because you're always go going and looking for, you know, a half inch to three eighths adapter or, you know, jump, jumping up to half inch or three quarter. Um, so I have those stationed right here so that we can always have them readily accessible. Uh, moving on to screwdrivers, always need a big flathead screwdriver to use as a pry bar improperly. But to discourage us from using it as a pry bar, I also have two snap-on pry bars, the small and the uh, and the medium size. I keep the I keep the large one close by so that you know if we need it, it's uh, within a stone's throw. Um, I don't I don't talk like this on. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with some, when have I ever used Stone's Throw? They're like, all right, so, so moving on. Uh, ooh, this thing is awesome. Uh, this is a BDS. Uh, Carlisle also makes this. This is an extension, half-inch extension with a handle on it. Um, how it's got bearings inside of it or whatever, so when you put it on an air impact, you can just hang on to it, and it just spins freely right there. I think this is an oh, yeah. awesome tool. Just especially putting on for top, putting tires back on and stuff like that. Always useful. Okay. Um, next thing, uh, some Allen keys that are three eighths drive. I really like that set. Um, I wish that my other set did the little plastic blown mold. Uh, this little, it's kind of silicone. It's not plastic yeah. at all. Um, I it wish the other one. I wish the other one wouldn't have broke. This, I mean, this is probably going to break soon with us hanging it like that, but. All right, now next, what's up? What do you want to talk about? Let's do the ratchets. Okay. The reason why we got the ratchets, I mean, you got your nice rubber grip snap on. Yep, the soft grip. Don't use it that much. I'm not allowed to because I get too dirty. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I mean they're nice. It's got a nice. <laughs> All right, so I don't even know I, I'm that. a little picky about my tools. Uh, 
I uh, the comfort grip D Dylan's always got crap all over his hands so he's always got grease and I feel like he just goes in with a handful and gets a bunch of grease and then gets it everywhere so um, Man, I got handprints around the shop <laughs> on the wood and from the catwalk and stuff just grabbing trying to pull myself up or... so that's why I've put the cornwell <laughs> the cornwell hard handled ones up there because you can wipe those off easier than my comfort grip snap-on so I get to use the snap-on comfort grip Dylan gets to use the cornwells. Which so. I'd rather prefer the cornwells anyway, but that's just me. So we've got a quarter inch, a three eighths. Uh, we also have the half inch breaker bar and a half inch uh, ratchet. Um, some of the, the same with NWS pliers. So these, if, if, <laughs> if, if you don't know anything about NWS pliers or German pliers, very nice. Um, I really like them. Uh, they're just really hard to keep clean and hard to keep nice. The handle is is uh, really eccentric. It's kind of wild. But I've got the needle nose, got the flat build, all that stuff. Um, 12 millimeter and 10 millimeter ratcheting wrenches. What do we use a 12 millimeter for? The brakes on the 7.3. Okay, all right, very well. So you remember, I don't. So oh, is it the brakes? I don't know. We use a 12 I don't millimeter think it's long the enough. Brakes. It's Something to do with the 7.3. Okay. I just can't remember exactly what we use it for, but we come across it quite a bit. And a 10 millimeter is always necessary. Um, I put some super lube up here so that we always have it if we need it, a little bit of silicone grease. Um, diagonal cutters, piece of cake, that's a given. Uh, ooh, I like ooh, the, yeah. the coolant pliers. The coolant, the coolant hose clamp pliers are very useful. Um, I hang a level there for some carpentry stuff that's not car related. Uh, and then we move down here, the, my ratchet set. So I have the Milwaukee uh, 3 8 drive socket set. I did a video on this one a long time ago. It was all nice and pretty and people were like, oh, you're never going to use it. Well, like a week after Dylan ran over it with the truck. I didn't hold up <laughs> with the 7.3, which isn't light. So and it, actually, for being all plastic case, it actually held up really, really good. Yeah, so you know? I'm very impressed with this kit. We've used the crap out of it. Dylan's ran it over, literally, um, and it's been just fine. So I, I like that a lot. Now, uh, this is an old Craftsman set I did another video on. Uh, this is from 1997. I got this as a kid, uh, and we use the heck out of it every single day. And uh, I wouldn't say every day. I mean, let's not well, get ahead of I ourselves. Mean, well, but, when we were working on projects and everything else, that was always the go-to, grab it out of the toolbox before we actually did the pegboard, which we put it below the pegboard now just because we don't have to go back to the toolbox anymore. We just grab the set. We pretty much know just by looking at what the bolt size is now from working on so many projects where right. we just grab a socket out of it, grab the ratchet, and just go back to the truck. So there's no fiddling around looking for sockets in the toolbox or it's all right here, easy to get to. Just grab and go. And I think it makes us very efficient. So um, I, I think that's above and beyond everything that, you know, if you're looking for a way to set up your shop, if you're looking for a way to be a little bit more organized, think about your flow, your workflow. Um, you could lean Six Sigma if you wanted to say the official term. Uh, take less steps to get things done and have everything in an organized manner. Um, this is definitely the way to go. Uh, it, it's made us a lot more efficient and these are the things that we grab for the most often and that's how we set up the pegboard so you got anything else to say about it is that no, enough that's, all right that's pretty good so we bumped our gums long enough I hope you guys got some information from this video and it wasn't just us rambling on over and over and over again and maybe you already clicked off the video but if you stuck around and you're hanging with us I, I sincerely appreciate it and I hope to see you subscribe. Uh, I, I would appreciate that thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you're into. Uh, hope to see you around the channel. As you might see Dylan in the future, you might not, who knows, he might say, I'm camera shy, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, but maybe you'll see him in, in later episodes. We'll be doing all kinds of fun stuff. We definitely need to do an update on your truck because his truck is, is, uh, is done and wrapped up. up. So we're going to do an update on his 7.3. I think we recorded that first video like a year ago. So uh, It's been about <laughs> a year and three months so, since I've had it on the road. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a long time coming, but um, I hope my truck doesn't go the same way. But. Yeah.
Yeah, yours is next with the <laughs> transmission. All right. And then the, the vet. Maybe so, maybe so. So I hope you guys uh, tune in for episodes in the future. As always, we'll see you guys in the next video.